spent a summer with them and I guess he kind of fell entangled with their doctrine and their beliefs and brought my family there. So this was when I was about 14 years old and uh, just decided that we were going to start living there and you know, doing, doing the things that they do. They go out and do these protests. And honestly, I just feel like he was searching for some type of truth, some type of way to have control over his family. You could ask him, but I just feel like it was for him as this form of control that he was looking for in his life. I was on the picket line because, you know, they would always have us go to, they would send us off to protest. We didn't even get to choose which one we went to. I was standing on the picket line and we were at a ch child's funeral and I had a sign and I was like thinking in that moment, I don't want to be here. I'm so ashamed of being here. This is someone's child that they're mourning. If they ever see me or if the media comes up to me, I don't want to answer for this. Like I was just, I just hoped that nobody could see me. And it was that moment when I realized like, these aren't my beliefs. This is not what I believe. You know, this is not where I want to be. This is, I don't believe this is God's way. And I don't want to judge people like this. It looks like my dad was just looking for any excuse or any reason to kick me out, to just be like, this isn't my daughter anymore. She's clearly not a Christian. I didn't have an opportunity to leave, although I was, I was very close because I was already questioning all the beliefs. He cut me off without even a second chance, cut me off from my life, my family, my home, my siblings. I haven't had, been able to speak with them or have a relationship with them in 11 years. So for me, the reason I didn't leave on my own first is because I didn't want to cut myself off from my family and I knew that's what was going to happen. So he kind of cut me to the chase and although it's a blessing in disguise, you know, I don't, I'm not there anymore and I'm happy for that, living a better life, but um, it, it was not my choice originally. I just remember praying, thinking like, God, please don't take Christianity, faith and everything away from me just because of what happened to me at the church because I didn't want to believe that that's the way God really was or that that was it. When I was a nurse for 10 years, I saw people at the bedside, you know, needing heart transplants, uh, open heart surgery. I just saw them really having extreme disease processes. And I really wanted to get on the preventative side of healthcare. So that's why I'm also so passionate about diet and training and getting strong. And I love empowering other women and um, people in the fitness space as well. I fell in love with it. I had a passion for it. You know, it was very therapeutic. Uh, there were times in my life where I experienced a lot of like anxiety and depression. And for me, it was just an amazing outlet. And I'm also a registered nurse of 10 years. And so I really like to be on the proactive side of healthcare and keeping myself healthy and fit and active. So for me, it was just a perfect fit for both like therapy and just helping inspire and motivate people to like a healthy, fit and active lifestyle. When I wrote my book, um, Banished, Surviving My Years of the Westboro, and back in 2013, I was just so honored and to get feedback from people that said that I helped change their life. You know, people that have survived a cult or people that have survived these extreme hardships with their families due to religion or any other type of thing, um, I just want to show them that just to be confident, there are people out there that are willing to forgive, that are willing to support you, and there is life after that. You know, I really, there was times in my life where I didn't really think I could go, move on from there. Like, where, what am I gonna do with my faith? What am I gonna do with my life? Like, what's my path? Is there any other way uh, to survive this or to become an empowering, you know, motivator in life? And so that's, that's the kind of message I hope to leave for people is that, you know, you can be a really big motivator and empowerment source for other people if you share your stories.